So friends, welcome back to our channel Learn with Geeks. In today's video, as you can see on the screen, we will be discussing today which visual to be used when in Power BI. And this is one of the most favorite questions of the interviewer in the Power BI interviews. Okay. Many people have asked me to do a video on this as they have been asked this question in the Power BI interviews. So do watch the video completely so that you get to know each and everything about it. Okay. So let's start the video. And if you're new to the channel, then do subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with all the coming videos. Okay. So let's start with the first visual and here I will be focusing on this standard visualization pane that is there in the Power BI desktop. Okay. So because most of the questions are asked on these varieties only interviewers do not ask you about custom visuals. They focus on these standard visuals only. Okay. So let's start with the first visual. Okay. So this is our waterfall chart. Okay. What is the practical scenario or when it can be used? We can see have we can have an example here. Okay. So it can be used to plot your company's annual profit by showing various sources of revenue. Sources can be anything. I have put here category. So various sources of revenue and arrive at yearly total profit. Okay. So in this way, if somebody asks you, can you tell me where waterfall chart is used and can be used? So you can answer this thing. Okay. As an example, you can see here in the chart we have since we have three years of data 2015 that is 2015 2016 and 2017 so yearly we are able to see the total profit year wise right so in, in the year 2015 you can see the overall profit is 2.6 million now from 2015 to 2016 uh, the profit got increased in the bikes category in the accessories category and in the clothing category so overall around 1.67 million uh, profit got raised from 2015 so if we add that to 2.60 it will become 3.97 so in the year 2016 3.97 similarly if you go from 2016 to 2017 the the profit got increased from accessories it got increased for clothing but it got decreased for bikes so so overall the profit from two, 2016 to 2017 uh, as you can see it is 3.89 million Okay, so through this chart, we can easily picturize that thing year wise, what is the total profit and which are the exact source of category where we are having a profit or a loss. Okay, and at the end overall, if we are having a profit or not. So in this way, you can explain waterfall chart. I hope it is clear to you now. Okay, now let's move to the second visual that we will discuss today. So in the second visual, as you can see here, it is tree map chart. Okay, so when it is used, it is used when correlation between color and size is easy to spot. It's not good when there is a big difference between magnitude of measure measurable values. Okay. Whatever uh, measure values we have, if we have a big difference. Okay. For example, as we can see here, what we have in this, we have total orders by age, what we are showing here. So if I hover over this, you can see the current age. So the people who have the age of 54, they have, uh, have the total orders of 1024. Okay. If I go to age 53, so the total orders is 991. So as you can see, uh, the correlation between color and size is easy to spot. And plus the magnitude of difference is not much like it is not a, a huge difference between these two numbers 991 and 1024 or similarly for other ones. Okay. So we are able to spot that difference and numbers easily through this tree map chart. Okay. I hope it is clear to you now. And you can tell to the interviewer the way I have told you. Okay. Through this example. Okay, now let's move to visual number three. So this is scatter chart. Okay, when when do we use scatter chart? It is used to show the relationship between two sets of data. Okay, for example, uh, as you can see here, we have a scatter chart here, and here you can see we have the total cost and the total sales by product color. Okay, but so what you can infer from here? So as you can see here, this is black color. The the product color is black, and the total cost is 44 something and a total revenue 78 something. Similarly, if I go here, you can see uh, the total cost is 29 and the to total revenue is 49. If I go here, the total cost is 13 and the total revenue is 22. Yeah. So what can we infer from this scatter chart or what, what does the relationship show here between total cost and total revenue? So the first inference that can be drawn from here is that, that when uh, <coughs> the total revenue is almost twice the total cost. Okay. This is the first inference that can be drawn. And the second inference is the product color that is black 
has the total cost the most okay uh, i hope scatter chart is also clear to you now and you will be able to tell it in front of the interviewer now let's move to visual number 4 so this is a very simple line chart but it has a very good usage and that's why it is being asked in the interviews so you don't know you do not have to speak uh, very normal about line chart that everybody knows what you have to speak is you have to speak it is used to show trend as well as forecast okay and this question is asked in pl 300 exam also which uh, visual is used for forecasting so line chart is the visual which is used for forecasting so what you have to speak it is used to show trend as well as forecast for example if we can see here the total profit by year 2015 2016 2017 so we have three years of data so as we, we can see here the profit is increasing from 2015 to 2017 in a exponential way so that's why this trend line as you can see here it is showing exponential way of increasing profit okay now this is the trend and how, what about the forecast so as you can see here we have done the forecast for the next two years that is 2018 2019 so with the help of the past three years data we are able to forecast the profit for the next two years that is 2018 and 2019 okay as you can see here the predict, these are the predict, uh, pre predictable uh, forecast okay so this is a very good usage of line chart and that's the same you can speak in front of the interviewer okay now let's move to visual number 5 so this is a funnel chart okay what does it do it helps visualize a linear process that has sequential connected stages okay this thing you can speak and as an example you can say for example we have number of application by recruitment process okay so at the top we have applied cvs okay so 750 is the total applied shortlisted are 550 the cleared cvs has been 400 the people who have cleared the written is 280 clear technical round 150 clear pi is 120 and final selection is 95 so you can see this is a, this is a very sequential order of connected stages right and where we are able to pictureize this properly what is the final selection of people at the end and what is the total number of applied cvs so out of 750 95 people were the ones who were finally selected and we can see the overall all the sequential stages also okay so this example you can speak in front of the interviewer okay i hope it is clear to you now now let's move to visual number 6 so visual number 6 is gauss chart so what is the practical scenario it is used to show progress towards a particular goal okay and it helps to understand to what extent a goal has been completed okay so this is way this is how you can speak and for example you can consider the total orders and the target order for example in a company if or in a in a company in a month if a company has has uh, a total target order of 32000 what was the exact total orders placed so for example the company uh, expected the target order order of 32000 but in the actual what happened the total orders got placed was 25000 so through the help of gauss chart they are able to see or pictureize that they lack 7000 uh, orders what they targeted for okay because 25 32 minus 25 is 7000 so 7000 orders they are short of so in the gauss chart you can easily pictureize that okay so in this way you can tell this example for a gauss chart okay i hope it is clear to you now for the gauss chart also now let's move to visual number 7 so this is decomposition tree so we know in the in our standard visualization pane we have quite a few uh, ai based visual artificial intelligence based visual for example this decomposition tree we have another key influencer we have uh, this uh, smart narrative and we have this qna okay so these all are uh, ai based visuals right but the most frequently asked uh, questions are of are on decomposition tree and key influencer so we will focus on these two here okay so for decomposition tree you can say say it lets you visualize data across multiple dimensions okay and at the same time it enables drilling down into the dimensions in any order okay and it's an excellent tool for root cause analysis okay so these things you have to keep in your mind and for example as you can see here okay we are going to analyze our total sales or revenue and how we are uh, going to analyze we will be explaining it by category sub category and product okay now as you can see here 
this is the total sales and this total sales is explained by first the category which is the category we have which is responsible for most of the sales and that is bikes now under bikes which is the sub category which is being sold most that is road bikes and under road bikes which is the exact bike or name of the bike which is being sold okay so in the form of a tree right in the form of a tree you are able to see the every branch of a particular uh, category right it is very user friendly interface you are able to uh, find the uh, that's why it is called a excellent tool for root cause analysis you are able to see you are able to pictureize everything clearly right and similarly you can, we can go for accessories also okay in accessories also and clothing also so i hope decomposition tree visual is clear to you now and the way you have to tell this in front of the interview what all points you have to mention okay i hope it is clear to you now now let's move to visual number 8 so visual number 8 is key influencers okay this is also another ai based visual okay i have taken the same example if if i click on this visual you can see we have the same number of uh, same type of format as we have for the decomposition tree we have the analyze we have the explain by let me go back and show you again say this <clears throat> analyze explain by so what's the difference between this analyze and explain by and this uh, uh, key influencer tab uh, analyze and explain by the only difference is that in this analyze section of key influencer tab here continuous values like measures are put okay plus categorical values can also be put but in decomposition tree you can't put any uh, categorical values for example for example if we want to analyze uh, our uh, countries i can put also here country column but i can't put the country column in my analyze section of decomposition tree but here i can put but in this example i have put the same total sales now what does key influencer visual do here we have two tabs one is the key influencer tab which will display a ranked list of individual contributing factors contributing to the total sales okay and we have a top segment tab, tab that is the top top segment tab will tell about the expected output for a particular input for example or is, you can see here what influences the total sales revenue to increase the category name which is bikes so bikes are the one cat, uh, bikes are the categories where which is influencing the total sales or revenue to be the most okay which are helpful to to increase the revenue as you can see here the overall average is 191650 and this bikes category only surpasses that uh, Uh, average line right and that's why we have here category name as bikes only one category if we would have some other uh, categories also it would have also ranked the same in the same way but since here it is only one which is crossing this average line so we are only able to see only or only one section here of bikes so this is key influencer tab and the top segments tab as you can see here if i click on in segment 1 it will show you the details that the average total revenue is 268 This is 77 times higher than the overall average of 191 that I showed you in the key influencer tab. And here you can see here, segment one contains 88 data points. That is 67%, 67.7% of the data. So overall, bikes category is consuming 67.7% of the data, and that's here, and that's how we are able to pictureize the percentage part also. Here, here only we have only one category, right? If you have some other categories also which were crossing the that average line, then we will be able to see the other percentage also which uh, which category is contributing how much above average okay so this is how we have we interpret interpret key influencer and top segment tab okay so i hope this key influencer visual is also clear to you now these are the top 8 visuals on which the questions are asked and i hope it is clear to you now and you will be able to tell or answer it in front of the interviewer so that's it for this video if you like the content please hit the like button and share the video to all your friends and colleagues whoever are in need of this okay so stay tuned and thank you